You want to create a budget but you don't know where to start. Or you're getting paid every single week but money is still slipping through your fingers. Well today I'm going to share with you my weekly budgeting strategy that will help you create and stick to a budget. But first if you're new around here, hi I'm Elena and this is The Organized Money where we talk about budgeting, saving, getting out of debt and multiple streams of income. If that interests you then make sure that you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you can be notified when I post a video every Monday and Thursday. I recently started a Facebook group called the Organized Money Makers and in that group one of the members was talking about how the time budgeting strategy helped him get back on track. And when I read that message, I realized that even though I have this entire system set up, it's been a while since I've talked about my budgeting basics. So for all of you newbies out there, today we're going to be talking about the basics of budgeting and how to get set up if you've never created a budget before. The first thing that you need to do is figure out what budgeting method is going to work best for you. If you don't know how you need to see your numbers, then you're definitely going to dread the budget process. So this is an essential part of figuring out exactly how you need to budget. There are three different methods that you can try while trying to figure out how you like to budget. The first one is a budgeting app. Two of my favorite budgeting apps are Every Dollar and Mint. You can set up your budget in the app and track the expenses in the app as well. If you're the type of person that doesn't like to get too consumed with the details and you basically just want to see the overview, then the budgeting app can definitely work for you. The app will basically categorize everything for you and then you can check it periodically to see how you're doing. Hey guys, okay, future Elena here. Um, I wanted to jump in on the video right here because I wanted to show you how you can actually set up Mint and how easy it is. I realized when I was editing the video that it may seem a little bit confusing if you are a beginner to using budgeting apps. So let me show you how you can use this. If you go to mint.com, you can actually set up an account and it's absolutely free. Okay, so I'm using another email address just so I can show you guys how to set this up. I already have an account with Mint, but I wanted to use a new email address just so y'all would know how it would look if you set up an account. So once you put in all your information and you create an account, it will, you will get to this screen where it tells you welcome to Mint. You can put in your country and your zip code. The next thing that you can do here is actually attach it to your bank account. Once you attach it to your bank account, you connect it and then you let Mint do the rest, meaning that it will um, categorize your um, transactions for you. So once you log in, you may have to tell it uh, for a couple of transactions that are coming in exactly what to do. And then after a while, it does it on its own. It categorizes everything and it shows you exactly um, how much you're spending in each category. So that's why I say this is the most hands-off approach because once you sign in and kind of play with it for a little bit, it will start to automatically know where everything goes and you won't have to do anything else besides for check it and see how you're spending your money and then make changes as necessary. The second method is using an Excel spreadsheet. Now this is my husband's favorite way to budget, which is why we have a digital version of our budget and also a paper version. And he likes to see all of our bills and budgeting categories on the spreadsheet along with our expenses. Now this is a little bit more hands-on than the budgeting app because you have to review your expenses in your bank account and add them to your Excel spreadsheet. But this is the perfect medium between having everything done for you on the budgeting app and the last version that we're going to talk about, which is the paper budget. My husband likes this method because he's a little bit more hands-on and it's a nice medium in between the two. So guys, I just wanted to show you really quickly what our Excel spreadsheet looks like. This is what my husband likes to use when we are planning out our finances. We use this 
in order to kind of goal set together, to plan out what we're doing together. And as you can see, it has our income at the top and our expenses are divided up by our fixed expenses. This is the things that's just gonna come out automatically. Our variable expenses, our subscriptions, and then our debt is at the bottom here and payments that we're going to make toward each one. So with our income, it is a 17 50 and then all of the expenses are 1750 which is a zero base budget and then I will use this kind of at the end of every month so to put in the different categories of what we have spent our money on and zero it out and then me and him can look at this together this is not my primary way to look at our finances but since it's his we do have this um, set up and it works for him because he likes to you know glance at things even though he's not the primary person that handles the finances he likes to glance at things and see where we are so I just wanted to show you this in case you wanted to create an Excel spreadsheet and that's why I said this one is a little bit more hands-on because you have to actually go in and add in different numbers here but with the app it automatically does it for you now the last method is for all of us type A personalities out there that like to get into the details. And it is my personal favorite, which is the pen and paper budget. Using a budget planner just works for me because I realize the numbers just stick more in my mind if I write them down. I keep everything in a budget planner and I have created a budget planner just for this specific purpose. If you have a type A personality and feel like a budget planner will work best for you, then make sure that you check out this video on my budget planner setup. Now, you've heard all three of these methods. If you still aren't sure where you fit within these three, then try all three of them. You can test all three of these methods within the next week or two and see which one best fits you. You'll quickly realize which one you like the most because it will be the one that you are drawn to check every day. After you've figured out your budgeting method, the next thing that you need to do is figure out how much money you have coming in versus how much money you have going out. Now, you can't skip this part because because you can't plan what you don't know. So you need to take out the time to add into your app or to write down or to add into your Excel sheet all of your income and all of your expenses. For me, I have six streams of income because having multiple streams of income is a big part of the time system, but that's for another video. All you need to know here is to write down all of your streams of income. Everything that you're doing to make money, you need to account for every single dollar. Then you want to take time to write down every single dollar that's going out. This includes all of your fixed expenses, things that you cannot change that will come out of your account every single month, and all of your variable expenses like food, shopping, and entertainment because those numbers can change. And you want to see how much you have left over after you subtract your income from your expenses. Now, if you want to see how I do this with actual numbers, then make sure that you check out this video here where I break down my monthly budget. The next thing that you want to do is figure out how you're going to keep track of your cash or your debit card spending. So now you've figured out your method. You have also set up your income and all of your expenses. You have paid all of your bills. And now you have this amount left over that's left in your checking account. The most important step here is to figure out how you're going to keep track of that extra money that's left over. If you save it for your emergency fund or set it aside for sinking funds or if you spend it on discretionary spending, we need to keep track of how that money is spent. And if you don't know the best way to keep track of your expenses, then make sure that you check out this video here where I talk about some tips and some strategies that I use to keep track of our expenses. Now, all of the steps are super important, but this one is really, really important. I feel like I've been saying that this entire video, but this really is super important, guys, because this is the part where most people lose track. This is where they usually end up overspending, and this is the part where overdraft fees and all of that really comes in. So you really need to find a way to stay on top of your expenses. 
If you aren't keeping track of that money that's left over in your account and you're just swiping your card left and right, you will never be able to stay on top of your money. And this is the part where you can start to evaluate how you're spending your money and where those expenses are going. So if you aren't keeping track, it's going to be hard to evaluate how well you're actually doing. And if you have a special way that you're keeping track of your expenses, let me know in the comments below. I always use my budget planner, but I love to hear different people's experiences and what they do and how they keep track of their expenses. As you go through this process, remember that practice makes perfect. Don't give up and continue to tweak your budget. Continue to figure out what works best for you. And if you're constantly tweaking those numbers and they still aren't working, then make sure that you check out this video here where I give you some strategies and tips on what to do when your budget is just not working. So now that you have your budget basics, the next thing that you're going to want to do is set up your budget categories. This is where you're figuring out the eight to 10 categories that work best for you. And I have created a document of the most popular eight to 10 budget categories that will help you as you're creating your first budget or resetting your budget. Make sure that you click the link below in the description box so I can send you those budgeting categories. And if you wanna join a community of people who are getting their personal finances on track, make sure that you click the link to the Facebook group so that you can connect with other people who are just like you. Check out these other videos that will help you on your budgeting journey. And if you like this video, then make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Until next time, keep organizing your life so that you can achieve your dreams. Bye guys.